Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution assigns to Congress uh, the power over foreign commerce and domestic commerce. Mm -hmm. Congress has delegated, delegated far too much of this constitutional power to the president. Uh, these statutes have been much used and even abused uh, by uh, President Trump. So the first priority uh, for the Congress is to enact an umbrella law that subjects presidential use of these statutes, congressional review and ratification. The second priority is to renew trade promotion authority. When it's renewed, the Congress should give the president, as it always does, but probably in more detail than previously, instructions on what countries are important to conclude agreements with and what issues should be covered in those agreements. The IFIs are crucial magnifiers of U.S. policies uh, addressing the problems and uh, priorities in the global economy and financial system. And we should support them, not out of charity, but in our own self-interest. Through them, the United States lever leverages financing and other forms of support for uh, other countries to address our priorities and mobilize international public opinion. The Congress should authorize the U.S. Treasury to lend $75 billion to provide the to fund temporarily with the financial resources to support its members in recovering from the pandemic. It would be larger than that of any other current bilateral lending to the lender to the fund, which is appropriate for the United States. We must restore domestic political support for international economic cooperation and U.S. global economic leadership. The Congress has got to play a central role, and especially the committees with responsibility for foreign policy and national security have got to be central to that effort. They have three main tasks. First, you have to help restore a positive national narrative about U.S. participation in the world economy, international economic cooperation, U.S. global economic leadership. Secondly, we have to emphasize the importance of all this for U.S. foreign policy. The third and final thing is for the foreign affairs committees and the foreign policy community more broadly to push and support the administration to pass the kinds of legislation, resolutions, uh, sentiment uh, building exercises that are necessary to enable policies of this type to go forward. When tariffs are introduced unexpectedly and imposed rapidly, it's impossible for companies to calculate their size, their scope, or their duration. How long are we gonna have to manage these additional expenditures? Likewise, retaliatory tariffs, which U.S. companies will undoubtedly face in response to these U.S. tariffs, are also present unknown size, scope, and duration. And so this tremendously increases uncertainty costs for companies. Tariffs or the threat of tariffs affect business decisions, including investment decisions and hiring decisions. And of course, this is a significant uh, drag on economic activity. And so while there have been several studies analyzing the direct cost of tariffs, I would urge Congress to study the impact of these uncertainty costs that they inflict. You know, what, what is the impact of the investments that do not get made? the job offers that are not extended and the U.S. exports that do not reach their markets.